Got Georgie's girl here. Able to get a, a little and uh, hey, if you notice, she spreads way lobby, back. And we do have 50 caliber machine gun here beside it. But yeah, we have a fully restored World War II plane in here. Motor just uh, very nice restoration on oh, that. Here's the nose art. So the and we've got over uh, planes shot down, over bombs dropped, all the trains blown up, all the ships sunk here on the front. So it's a just a meticulous restoration on this. I mean, you can see all the information on the props. Just uh, incredible. We got the proper canvas down below. Here's some of their specifications on George's Girl Liberator. Sure, yeah. Tell me about that. You know. I can't. They're not getting my job now. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, I won't. I won't. Back a nose gun well, there. I don't know now. I'll, maybe we got to go with seniority here. But and, you probably uh, got me beat. I don't know. I guess this just impressive. The glass in the thing is perfect. I just started. Did you? Yeah. Well, you looking at No, just, just coming over. Okay. Just dosing. Hang out. Yeah. I, I love all this stuff. I was always a big, when I was a kid, I was a big fan of airplanes. And then uh, next to Georgie's Girl, the Liberator, we have a. Yeah, and this is the spot. Okay. Yeah. My first airplane ride was on that day. SNJ5. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, well, we're voice it's a training here. plane, but wow. it uh, needs a lot of restoration yet. Yeah, they got a lot of these projects here. <laughs> this is a train ride. If you think drones are something new, they are not. Look at this this drone right here. You can see the little wooden prop on it. U.S. Army. This little drone was made in the 1950s. Northrop made these little Falcon Ears in the 1950s. That's amazing. I didn't know they made drones that long ago. And beside it's a, a neat little uh, troop transport, transport. Look at that little guy. Tracked down here. It's not much bigger than a Jeep. And they've got one that's even smaller. Over there. We got the little uh, 1945 uh, Studebaker uh, weasel here, little track guy. That's a, a neat little item. Uh, it's sitting here with all these big planes. There's a big tri-motor. And uh, there's uh, Georgie's girl over here. But uh, this is uh, what a nice little uh, piece at the museum. Little Studebaker. And uh, so if you Jeep wouldn't get you there, maybe this guy would. Look inside real quick. Pretty sparse in here. This is up here, the driver's seat. We'll slip around the front side of this little weasel. And uh, pretty sparse up front. And as you can see, it's part of the Marine Corps. It's been island hopping. Be handy if uh, island hopping probably bearing the jeep and uh we got a 1942 harley right next to it wla and uh as well as uh an old vintage indian and then the army they have uh this guy right here you can see the tracks down below and a big browning BAR inside there. And uh, their little weasel looked a little different. Also 1945 weasel. But uh, slightly different, probably just a different version for a uh, different military here. 
and oh my gosh uh this little thing right here you got a little tiny tank there's an old truck right next to it you can see how small it is and uh this is a little german tank <laughs> that's the lowest one i've ever seen <laughs> An old Ford truck here. And uh, some old, uh, this one, the Dodge, maybe, I'm not sure. But some of the old troop transports. And then we have our, uh, our Willys and Ford Jeeps. And that one has a big 50 cal machine gun. Nice little models. And you get a nice view of uh, the Ford Tri-Motor here. And we have uh, the Ford Tri-Motor in front of us right now. You can see two of the motors and one on the other side. And uh, Right, squeeze them beside it. As we have a, a plane that can land on water. I'll come up and take a little closer look at this guy. There you can see it landing. There it is again. We have a row of uh, vintage Willys and probably Ford Jeeps here. And the trailer that went with them and the bicycle. And actually these are Ford Jeeps. And we have some more project stuff back there. And then the wings off of that one over there. Some of the rockets you would see mounted under the wings here. A little information there. have the Avenger it has its wings uh, twisted and folded back right now so they can put it into the hangar here and uh, we have a little bit of information here sorry about the glare on the restoration but yeah and some of the rockets they would have been mounted on the Avenger You can see all the workings under the wing to turn it in and out. It is large. And then next to the Avenger, we have some of the anti-aircraft. Guns from World War II. And again, a little bit of information on these uh, German World War II anti-aircraft guns. Bicycles. And we've got an old truck back here. Another one over there. But these were uh, two centimeters, so they were nearly 50 caliber. 
actually two centimeters, that's nearly an inch, sorry. Two and a half centimeters is an inch. So then we've got this bigger uh, anti-aircraft gun here. This uh, anti-aircraft gun is 3.7 centimeter. And we have a, a US half track here. A couple guns on the back. Yeah, this place is just packed full of all kinds of history. And the tri-motor over there. It's the water plane. And uh, this appears to be a, another uh, tri-motor in restoration. Here we have a, a B-36 Peacemaker radial engine. Now, there were several of them on a, each plane. One, two, three, four, five, and six of these big, huge motors on each one of those. And, uh, at first, these radials, here's the one out of the old Ford tri-motor, were just one row. You'll see there's radial motor, pretty obvious, but it's just one row of radial cylinders. And eventually, they thought, how could we make more power? We can make them bigger and bigger until they're just not efficient. So what they would do is you have one row again just like you saw a little bit ago but let's put another cylinder section behind it so you got one cylinder here one cylinder here one more cylinder here one more cylinder here so this is like you have one two three and four radial motors m1 so that one large motor is basically the same as having four of these and on the back end of it I'm sure there's some kind of supercharger or something as well but uh what a huge motor let's uh, go back in and see if I can see what the displacement is on that I don't see it and again, here is a, a plane model. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six of these huge motors on there. So pretty impressive. And uh, look at that from the back side. They have one of the very few Einsatz diesels here at the museum. This is German and it was a troop in a cargo transport and they didn't make them very long during the war due to their complex uh, motors and and suspensions mm -hmm. but uh, here's a little information on it okay. and but I'm not sure if these were six-wheel drive or four, or just the back four and next to it, we have a nice little Opal Blitz truck. And it's much smaller. This was based on a, yeah. a, a civilian type vehicle. Yeah. And uh, it would not have been able to carry near as much as the diesel. But uh, 
I imagine they, it might have ran just a little bit faster. They did have a bigger version. Of okay, they, they did make a, 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 a six wheel version. And again, this is uh, made from, uh, I started first year in 34. Now I imagine it went up at least to the end of the war. And uh, next to that, we have a track troop transport. And uh, it's, this was actually part of the Israelis for a while. And they sent it back with uh, this track transport. Uh, it has 50 cal machine gun here, 30 cal over here. Got our Tommy gun inside there. They got another 30 cal up front. And uh, you can see some of the instrumentation up there. I can't quite get close enough to see how fast that speedometer goes, but I'm guessing it's not super fast. Probably 45. And uh, being the gauges are white, that's probably something done uh, by the Israelis. Pin of a hook on the bottom here. Your ammo and such back here on the back. Uh, some of the, you would throw this across the top, some of the camo. Your tracks down below. Another little ammo can here. 45. And uh, we'll slip up here to the front. And uh, now you can see that uh, 30 cal 1919 Browning. Take a little look around inside here. Fuel tank back here, right underneath that 50 cal machine gun. And we'll slip outside, and you see some of the shovels, axes, etc. And yeah, 45 miles an hour. 45 mile an hour. Yep. This may be screaming. It's a speed demon. <laughs> Another thing I found out this the tread here. Yes. The tracks were all one piece. One piece track it was setup. Rubber covered metal. And I don't know how you'd work on that, but I can't imagine the yes. logistics. What is this? What is this? And this drum in front with a spring on it, do you know what that is for? Yes, that is for if you run into uh, rough terrain. Okay, so almost it like a hedgerow thing? And help lift the okay. vehicle over. And that helps get the front tires up over things yeah. so you just don't get stuck so on your front bumper. Bog down. Interesting. Some of them would have winches mounted up here too. Yep, I remember seeing some of the winches. Yeah, That's the first time I've seen this. Up on there and that roller there. Pull yourself out if you got stuck or uh, pull another vehicle. This uh, yeah, Browning 50 caliber machine gun here. Uh, I'll walk up a little closer and see charging and everything. And looks like it might be triggered by a button on top instead of switch on the back. But uh, there's the sights on top. But uh, this will go in that PT boat. It's not out of an airplane, or this is uh, from that PT boat. And uh, here's uh, their little workroom they have, where they uh, do all the rebuilds for all the different planes and and jeeps and tanks and everything else we have here and they've got a tiny little display of uh military weapons right here it's pretty neat but uh yeah this is uh part of their workroom back here